good afternoon uh, i want to talk about a few of the firsts and a few distinctions uh, when it comes to indian cinema uh, these are the things that i want to talk about what was the first film who was the first heroine and so on and so forth so i will try and uh, show visuals and uh, pictures and audio and things like that so let's see how we can uh, get it done yeah so why we believe that uh, raja harish chandra by dada saheb phalke is the first indian film there is evidence that another film called shri pundali which was also directed by another dada saheb dada saheb tome that was the first indian film it was shot in bombay and essentially was a screen capture of a play that was performed by a professional theater group and uh, some of the reasons why it was it is not considered uh, even though it released uh, around a year or so before raja harish chandra as to why it is not considered as a first indian film is because it released as a double bill with another hollywood film it came if you see the poster on the left hand side of your screen there are two two features in this particular uh, uh, the show there is a english film called a dead man's child then there is also pundalik mm. so that is the reason that is one of the reasons why it is not considered a first indian film and it was also certified as a double bill and it was shot by a british cinematographer and was very short around 22 minutes long plus it was processed abroad as well so all of those are reasons why we don't consider pundali that released on may 18 1912 even though it ran for two weeks back houses as the first indian film yeah now we talk about raja harish chandra i have called it harish chandra ji factory because uh, films and working in films was taboo the people who were working on the movie were instructed to talk to to tell people that uh, they are working in a factory and they are not working on a movie set so mm-hmm. and harish chandra's factory that's what the title is that's in marathi so it was produced and directed and written by govind phalke who was also known as uh, dada saheb phalke he spent his personal savings to make the film it was 40 minutes long entirely made up by an indian cast and crew from 40 people it was chosen since it was a popular play due to its mythological theme and uh, phalke had seen the popularity of silent movies uh, especially something on the life of christ and uh, other such subjects in terms of uh, how the sets looked like they were basically painted backdrops he himself painted those backdrops before he hired others to complete the work it was shot in a newly erected studio in dadar mumbai and the backdrops were inspired by raja ravi varma's paintings it premiered on 21st april 1912 and uh, 1913 sorry and later released at uh, a theater called coronation in bombay each show was one and a half hours length shows were held starting at 6 pm 8 pm 10 pm 11 45 pm the shows also had other performances if you look at the poster on the left hand side you will see that there is a duet and dance by miss irene delmar then there is a comical sketch by the mcclements and then uh, there is some foot jugglery by someone called alexandrov and there is a small uh, st- stand up uh, slapstick comedy routine by someone called tip top comics and uh, on the poster if you look at the absolute last line it says double rates of admission the first indian film plus all these other uh, additional um, goodies or treats if you will that were a part of this particular show so they were charging double admission and obviously they ran to packed houses right here are some of the visuals from the film i'll go to a video link now okay so that's him looking at the days uh, in say guys then uh, this is construction of the sets for the film this is where they are all getting dressed 
Did men play women or women played? Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no, no. Okay. You are sort of uh, leaking the question paper. So hold on. <laughs> okay. This is the last clip from, as far as this video is concerned. So, how did Palke come up with this whole thing? He, uh, there were these uh, silent movies that were playing in Bombay at that time. He went to watch a film called Amazing Animals with his son. One second. Travikram, do a slideshow. Do a slideshow, please. His son came back home feeling astonished that they could actually see Okay, they, they could actually see animals move on screen. None of the other members of the family actually believed that. So the very next day, he took his entire family to see another silent film called Life of Christ. And while he was watching that, he in his head started thinking of how he could make a Indian mythological film and maybe he could have Rama or Krishna as the central subject for the film. Then he visited London for two weeks, he learned the techniques, he bought cameras and he came back and uh, founded the uh, Falke Films company in April 1912. He set up a processing room and he taught his family, his wife, how, uh, how to cut negatives and develop the film. Right? Money was a problem. So he shot a one minute film called Ankurachi Vath Vard. So, this is like a, a, a showreel kind of a thing. What did he shoot? He chronicled the growth of a pea pod, which he had uh, planted, the pea seeds sprouting and then tendrils growing out of it. So that one minute uh, showreel is what he used to seek funding. Yeah. Oh. So if you look at what startups do these days in terms of having mock-ups and things like that, okay. uh, this, this whole one minute uh, short uh, reminds you of that. I tried to lay my hands on that, but uh, wasn't able to do that. It's available. I have seen it in the past. Then he advertised in magazines and papers for actors. While he got a lot of applications, he was satisfied with the skills that the applicants had. Then he, he thought of looking for actors on stage and found the Marathi stage actor called Tatreya Dabke to play the title role. Casting for Taramati, the queen, was a problem because no decent women, quote-unquote decent, were willing to apply. Women who came in were not as good-looking as he had thought they should be. Also, many were hesitant to be seen on screen. Now, when I'm talking about women who came in were not good-looking and they were hesitant to be seen on screen, to the extent of um, women in sex work, some of whom who came forward to audition, even they hesitated and backed off because they did not want to be seen on screen. Right? It was that bad mm. in terms of working for women. Finally, when he was having tea at a small roadside restaurant, he spotted a delicately featured young man who was working there. He was a cook or something like that. And in him, he found his Queen Taramati. It was played by the delicately featured Anna Sahib Sadamke. He got a pay hike of he got a hike of pay from 10 rupees to 15 rupees. He used to earn 10 rupees a month. So he became an actor slash actress and he got 5 rupee monthly pay hike. His son Bhal Chandra played the role of Prince Rohit and is believed to be the first child artist in Indian films. Uh, Harish Chandra has a lot of scenes set in Varanasi. Mm -hmm. So those were shot in Tripakeshpur, obviously due to budgetary constraints. His childhood friend Trimbak Telang, who was a priest by training, uh, Falke trained him to be work as a cinematographer. So each show was a one and a half duration, and all those things we've spoken about. Uh, tragically, only the first and last reels survived, and it was believed to be a partially lost film. Uh, subsequently, around uh, 10 odd years back, National Film Archives got different parts of the film from the Falke family and restored the film. In fact, in Bangalore, they came and did a... Somebody brought the reels to Bangalore and we had a showing in Bangalore. Mm. Those of you on Netflix, I would recommend that you do try and watch this Marathi film called Harish Chandrachi Factory. That's about the making of the first 
quote unquote first film and about Falke and his personal life. Yeah, so that was the first film. So, Harish Chandra. Now, first heroine. It obviously is not a respectable quote unquote job for a woman. So, however, one lady called Durga Bai Kamat was a stage artist and she came forward to work in Mohini Vasmasur. This was Falke's second film. And Mohini Vasmasur is the first Indian film to cast female actors in female roles. Before this, so Chika, as you pointed out rightly, female roles were played by male actors who were slightly effeminate looking or delicately featured or what happened. Now, uh, a little bit about um, Durga Bai Kamath herself. She was a, she belonged to a Brahmin family and she got married to an art school teacher. Her husband used to work in JJ School of Art in Bombay. Mm -hmm. At a very young age, she got married. She had a daughter whose name was uh, Kamala. And uh, the situation so happened that she had to get separated from her husband. Now, in those days, the uh, a Brahmin woman being separated from her husband was frowned upon by everybody in society in general. Her, 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 her own maternal, paternal, her family, they themselves said that uh, we disown you because you have separated from your husband. So in terms of livelihood options, she had a few options in front of her. She could work as a maid. She did not have a great education. She could work as a sex worker, she could become someone's mistress, or she could go on stage in showbiz. So out of those three options that were available to a single woman at that time, she chose to work on the stage. That would fetch her enough returns and she became part of a touring company, a traveling uh, drama company. And those dramas are mostly all mythological. So on the left hand side, the image is that of uh, uh, Durga Bhai Kamath, Kamala Kamath's mother. So, that is the origin of the first woman mm -hmm. who played a woman's role in films. Uh, her daughter Kamala Kamath acted as Mohini and uh, Durga Bhai acted as Parvati in the same film. Mm -hmm. uh, because female actors had started playing female roles, there were hopes that uh, more women will come forward and act. But unfortunately that did not happen due to the stigma or the lack of respectability for women to be seen on screen working with men. So men continue to play female roles even after Kamala and Durga Bhai's debut on screen. The, the last point, interestingly, the most opposition for women being cast in films didn't come from other women. It came from men who felt that their livelihoods playing female roles would be taken away if women acted in female roles. Think about that. <laughs> A male bastard so, uh, to conquer. A male yeah. bastion to conquer. <laughs> now we come to the first talkie. The first talkie is Alamara. This was made in Hindustani. So what you see on screen are uh, Ardeshi Rirani, right on the extreme left on the sets of the film, was recording the film's sound with the sound. You can see him with some equipment and headphones and things like that. And uh, the other two are posters and uh, playbills. So if you look at the one on, in the middle, it says it's India's first perfect talkie. All living, breathing, 100% talking. Clever dialogues, enchanting songs, peak of drama, a sense of romance, all-star cast production with Master Vittal and Miss Zubeda. Then if you look at the second last lines, there's a Miss Jiyu and a Prithviraj. This is Prithviraj Kapoor. Mm -hmm. On the extreme right, what you see here, the poster of the film, there's a group seen at the top and then there is uh, the heroine's Veda uh, shown within the A. And then there is this, this image at the bottom where Master Vittal and Veda are uh, in an embrace of some sort. Now this film came a very long time back. Look at the kind of images here and just think about uh, uh, in some sense how forward looking people were at a certain point in time that um, they would like to you know, portray something like this uh, on a poster, leave alone or on screen. Yeah. Mm. In the middle picture, the, the, the face here is that of uh, Zubeda, the heroine. She played the title role. Okay. Mm. 
then let's go to this. This I like because this is an iconic pose on the left with Master Victor and Zubeda in a scene from the film. And Google created a doodle actually in 2011. Here it is on the left hand side. Yeah. I've called this bunch of slides Dede Khuda Ke Naam Pe because that's the first song ever. That's the first time somebody opened their mouth and sang on screen. So if you look at the first image here, that is that song Dede Khuda Ke Naam Pe. Badruddin, the actor who played that role, he himself is singing. And this probably is at the end of the film where the hero and heroine are coming together in fully matching or whatever. So this is considered the first talkie of India. It was released on 14th March in 1931. After watching an American, a part, partial American talkie called uh, Showboat in 1929, Ardeshi Rani was already a filmmaker, he used to make uh, start films and things like that. He wanted to make India's first talking picture. Then he got together with another businessman called Abdul Ali Yusuf Ali and they formed a film, film company, set it up in 1926. That is, uh, that's the company that produced Alamara. It was based on a Parsi play of the same name. So the dialogues and all came from there. It cost around 40,000 rupees to make in those days. It was shot at a place called Jyoti Studios in Bombay. And the studio was, happened to, locate, to be located next to a railway track. So they had to do most of the shootings at night when train traffic was lesser. The, the casting of this film has a lot of interesting things. He wanted to cast the famous filmmaker Mehboob Khan in the lead role. Mehboob Khan is the one who made Mother India, Mughalaya, things like that. Right? But Mehboob Khan was not very popular in terms of his acting and people, people wanting to see him on screen. So he changed his mind and brought in an actor called Master Vithal, who was a very popular stunt artist from the silent films. However, he was under contract with another studio called Sarathi Films. So. That's another story. I'll come to that in a bit. Then, as the heroine Ruby Mayers was cast, her screen name was Sulochana. She was one of those Anglo Indian actors who used to very popular, very pretty, acting in the silent era. But she did not know how to speak in Hindustani. And as a result of that, she had to leave the project. She, she, took, a, she took off for a year, learned the language, and came back to the movies after, after that film. Uh, I don't know if uh, some, some of you have seen this uh, MGM musical called Singing in the Rain. Singing in the Rain talks about uh, that particular phase of Hollywood when silent era was giving way to the talkies. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the silent era actors were going away because they had really bad voices. They couldn't sing, they couldn't emote and so on and so forth. So, this, this whole Ruby Myers incident reminded me of singing in the rain, what happened in singing in the rain, so I thought I should just bring it here. The Zubeda who could speak the language is Brahman Bowl. And the cast and crew excited to be part of the first talkie to pay its everyone. Right? Uh, there is a connection between Alamara and a barrister called Mahmoud Ali Jena. I'll tell you what it is. So this actor Master Vittal who was in contra under contract with Sarathi Films. The contract would forbid him from working in outside productions. Any movie produced by someone not, who was not the Sarathi Films uh, unit. However, he went ahead and signed this film. Donkey and all excited and things like that. But those fellows filed a case, the Sarathi Film people. So, Mahmoud Ali Jina fought the case on behalf of Master Vithal and got him released from that contract. And that is how Master Vithal came to act in Alamara. So, that is the connection. It ran at this uh, theatre called Majestic in Bombay for eight weeks. People would queue up from 9 in the morning for the 3 p.m. show and police had to be brought in to manage crowds. Right? An important thing, whether it is good or bad, I leave you to be the judge of, is it deviated from the norm of depicting social norms and social practices and things like that. It sort of ended that trend. But still then it was all about those things. This was more like a fairy tale, the king and two queens and somebody gets pregnant, somebody commits adultery and then somebody gets killed. A lot of things happen and right at the end the hero and hero and come. This was one of those stories. Sadly, no print or rum from regard exists of this film, making it the more, one of the most significant lost films of India. Mm -hmm. 
he Ajesh Nirani being a businessman and a clever guy he went on to make another film called Kalidas which was his next film after Alamana and he used a lot of these sets that he had constructed for this for that film also let me try and play a recording of the song Are you able to see my blank screen? Yes, that's what. Correct. Now we are seeing your YouTube. Yes. YouTube. Yeah. Give it a second. Yeah. मोहम्मद खान ओके रोशन मिस्त्री so that was a clip of the very first song tere khuda ke naam pe yeah so that was alamara and the interesting connect that alamara has with uh, mohan ali ji and so on and so forth we come to kannada now the first kannada talk this is a film cut of this lochana was released on 13th march 1934 at paramount cinema i i have picture paramount cinema those of you who been in bangalore for a long time recognize it then i think that will be fun right a uh, marwadi businessman dunga ji set up south india movie tone in 1932 he chose a minor plot from the ramayana the story of ravana son indra ji surachana his wife since the, the general tendency was to uh, get uh, attracted towards uh, mythology based things then he brought yv uh, rao person called yv rao to direct it yv rao and nagendra rao nagendra rao who played uh, a key role played ravana in fact the film came from experience having worked in other films in bombay and they came to get the first kannada talky koi it starred subaya naidu as indrajit tripuram bai as lochana Ah, Nagendra Rao is Brahma. Lakshmi Bai is Mandodri. It was shot in natural light, completely in Kolhapur, and it used uh, one of the most. Uh, I was amazed that they actually used to do cameras for a battle sequence. Unheard of. Then uh, there's a bit about the leading lady Tripuramba. She had to cry when she uh, 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 for the film. She had to cry as. Uh, Sulochana, when she comes to know of Indrajit having been uh, killed, and uh, come what may, she could not muster any tears. So, say the director got really upset. Then the director gave her a slap. That didn't work. Then they brought uh, onions. That didn't work. They did all kinds of stuff. None of those things worked. The only thing that worked was they brought these really hot chilies. And uh, rubbed them on her eyelids. Yeah. So her eyelid eyes became very red because of irritation, but not too much of water flowing out, right? So they cheated. So she had red eyes, and then they sprinkled some water on her eyes so that it looks like she is crying. So this is like so this little chana with no tears, right? <laughs> it had <laughs> it had thirty songs. Come uh, composed by Nagendra Rao and another person called H R Padmanabh Shastri. Around three hours long, thirty songs ran for packed houses in for eight weeks. People uh, from around Bangalore would come with their bullock carts with uh, snacks and lunch and things like that. So it was like a day's outing for them. When the lights were switched off, they would get fearful. What is going on? And then when the screen lit up and images on screen spoke in Canada, the audience went literally crazy with excitement. So on the left-hand side, you can see the poster. Mura Netari Kushaniwara Binda. Ah. Katha Rajne Bellave Nar Narhari Shastri Gado. I don't know Sujeta Guru. Bellave. Ah. Narhari. Narhari Shastri. I don't know. I don't know Kannada literature. So you have to figure it. 
uh, he is some leading light. Bella Vedanta. I think Rahul heard Bella Vedanta. You have? You have? Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. But cool. my dad's uh, friend. <laughs> Such a small world. Such a small yeah, world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Janti will have met also, not just her father's friend. She will have met them. Look at that last line there. Parthi Vratta Prabhavada Mahime Yannu Ee Chitra Dalli Vekta Gode Si Utta De. And also, I, this part for the talkies, if I remember correctly, I think it was somewhere near city market, I think. Yeah, there it is. See, it would explain, right? Oh. Huh? You're right, it is near city market. Yeah, yeah so I, I think it was one or two films. Yes. Sorry? I, I remember going to Paramount uh, a couple of uh, Excellent. films. Excellent. So this, so this is Supaya Naidu and Tripuramba, the lead pair. Mm. Look at their costumes. Not much has changed between the 30s and now. Even <laughs> today, if someone were to make a mythological yeah. film, this is pretty much how people are dressed, right? Yeah. yeah. Look at the king. So let's go back. Yeah. yeah. So that whole bullet cards in front of Paramount Cinema, all that is done. Now, this is our Nagin, one dapper looking guy. He is known as the father of Kannada Cinema. Mm -hmm. Now, look at how all these different film industries sort of uh, got connected and enmeshed. He used to be working with Ardeshi Rani, mm -hmm. the man who made the first Toki Alamara. And this guy, Having been associated with Irani, said, uh, Why don't you come and make a film? The first Kannada talkie. It will be really good. And by that time, talkies had already appeared in Tamil and Telugu. But Irani, being a. He was based in Bombay and Hindi films were his focus. He was looking at a national market. He thought Canada, a Kannada film would have a limited market. So I will not be interested in it. But Nagendra Rao didn't let go. He got that script written from Bilavi Narahari Shastri and he kept meeting people to get finance and then met Dungaji. And Dungaji was also happy because he was also trying to make a Kannada talkie but hadn't got uh, the right kind of support from local artists. So that is how Sati Sulochana happened. Hmm. Here, this, this thing we saw. Uh, now, now there's an interesting thing, right? Because there is a race apparently. There was another film called Dhruva Kumara, which also had been in the making. The posters on the left hand side. This had started shooting before Sati Sulochana, but they weren't able to release it before Sati Sulochana. So that is why Dhruva Kumar lost out on the race mm. of being called the first Kannada talkie. I thought it was significant to talk for a minute about this because uh, to start something is, you know, it always takes a lot of courage and uh, forward thinking. So. This is a release poster. I don't know where Jayavani talk. Jayavani talk seems to be the banner or something like that. First canary is talkie is what they're calling it. Master Muttu was a child prodigy, prodigy of six years. And uh, apparently from this poster, he was the grandson of uh, A.V. Varadachar of Mysore. Mm. So that's about the yeah, okay. race that Sati Sulochana won. And, uh, Kumar lost. Hmm. Yeah. 34. 1934. Ah. 33 yeah. is Sulochana. Yeah. And Alamara is 23, Trivikram? Ah, Alamara. 23 is, now. I'm not good with dates. Still, I'm not good huh? with dates. I'm sharing. Yeah. 31. 31. Oh, yeah. Two years yeah. later, the Kannada talkie. Okay. Yeah, right. three years later. Three Sulochana years. came in 34. 31, 34. And uh, before me, Dhruva Kumar also came. Like, Maybe a couple of months months. here and there. Yeah, a few, mm. a few weeks after few weeks, came. Yeah. This is the power of the gramophone record. Mm -hmm. Oh, 30 songs, right? <laughs> Three hours, 30 songs. <laughs> I know. Amazing. <laughs> How could anyone, anyone sit through a movie? Of three hours and listen 30 songs. Oh my god, the mind I'm, boggles. Right? I'm thinking, how much of time was there to deliver a dialogue? All the time, they were <laughs> maybe everything was in uh, 
sing song tone uh, so okay. if you look at this this picture huh sorry what's your songs then even yeah. your drama is a yeah. any drama set concert correct yeah. correct they 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 come from their right theater yeah. so yeah exactly yeah. exactly that's what this is <laughs> The first family is talking. Comes work in the songs. <laughs> <laughs> All talking, singing, dancing picture. Yeah. How they are talking about it, but it's a lost film. We don't have oh. any negatives of this. No clips of this. Nothing exists, right? No Alamara, no Sati Sulokana. No, no, no. Which is quite terrible. so. This is all telling about how we treat our heritage, right? We mm. treat it as yeah. a such a callousness mm yeah. mm that comes to my mind but it, we don't look at it as having historical value that is a tragedy here right mm let's go to the next one this is the first color film it's called kisan kanya uh -huh. but ma devi played the lead you see her on the left with uh, some three pots of water <laughs> things like that seven <laughs> okay and look at the but see the point is If we can laugh at it, I don't think we should get indig indignant at it because this is reflecting of the times of a certain era. That's about it. That's how I look at it. Thirty-seven. It's quaint. It uh, is quaint. It's mm. not anything else. It's funny and quaint. Mm. So once again, Ardeshi Rani makes an appearance. If you see how he's connected to all the pioneering efforts of cinema, it's mm. mind-boggling, right? Mm. He's here also. He was the producer of Kisan Kanya. Mm -hmm. It was released on January eighth, nineteen thirty-seven. Right. Again, here also, like how we saw in the case of the first film, mm -hmm. there was a Marathi film made by Shantaram. We Shantaram. Nineteen fifty. First Iron Three. That had a few scenes in color, but that was processed in Germany. So ah. we being such sticklers or <laughs> so this year, I don't know what we don't consider that. That's also not fully in color, so that's the beauty. So the credit for the first fully indigenously made color film belongs to Kisan Kanya, 1937. Sadat Hasan Manto, the Urdu playwright and director, Correct. he wrote the story and dialogues. Uh, it's yeah. evident that from the name, it's about the plight of farmers and issues associated with them. It was directed by a gentleman called Mohti Kidwani. It starred Padma Devi. Gulam Muhammad and an actress called Jillo. Mm -hmm. Jillo also has also acted in Mother India and Mogalayazam. Mm -hmm. In Mogalayazam, she was cast as Anar Kali's mother. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, if you look at 1937, just look at um, okay, no, no. first color film had already come there using technology and not hand painted in 1935. It was called Becky Sharp Sujeta. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. yeah. Right. Vanity Fair. Now, mm. Vanity Fair. Mm. Now I'll talk a bit about this whole hand painted versus technology business. Hand painted was. Uh, do you guys remember those fake color photographs that people used to get clipped in studios way back in time? That is hand painting using stencils. So that was something that was used in the earlier. Era, as far as color was concerned, each frame was painstakingly. Oh my God! Hand painted, right? Then came the technology and the camera. And the technology way of color is what was used in Becky uh, Sharp, which was released in nineteen thirty-five. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look at that era, there was Gone with the Wind, there was Wizard of Oz, all those things were in the works, right? Mm. Glorious works of color and. Hmm. Yeah, both those require independent standalone discussions. Any, I just thought I should bring it up. Lovely. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah. that was about hand painted films versus tech films. So this is Kisan Kanya, Ardeshi Rani, Padma Devi. Padma Devi came from Bengal. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Used to go on the stage, and then uh, she came into the movies. This is a poster oh. on the left hand side. All process colored picture in cine color. Mm. It's giving you the cast and uh, crew and all of that. And on the right hand side, I have a link. Uh, I have a picture actually. Mm. Let me try and see what. I've forgotten what this link takes us to, but let's see where it goes. 
brought you to YouTube again. So he hears the voice, he 
is inside the haveli keeps smoking is outside the house When was this? 1949. All right. Okay. 49. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. 49. October hmm. 1949. Okay. But the song available on YouTube is good quality, man. Here it has just one. Huh? Sorry. Aayega aane wala song quality. Our twenty minutes of radio. The quality is good. Okay. 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 So, uh, uh, somewhere in the forties onwards, I think uh, prints have survived and things like that. And uh, if they have survived until then, then uh, if they have been digitized, then they have a possibility. Let's talk about our first cinema scope mm-hmm. film. Yeah, this was Kagas ke phool. Trivikram, what is cinema scope? Trivikram, what is cinema scope? Cinema scope is a change in the aspect ratio. Oh. Typically, if you see a 35 mm film projected, it, it 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 it's almost like a square. Correct. So, cinema scope is something where the aspect ratio is uh, changed so that the the width is way way bigger than the height of mm. the screen. Four is to three. Mm. Images images look mm. horizontal like that. Mm. Right. So, Thank you. That's, no, that's something else. I am not talking about seventy mm now. As in today, I am not talking about. Okay. Okay. So this is a poster from the original release because it's called Cool. Some <laughs> some artist has actually portrayed a cool around them. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So uh, look at this one here, where an old guru that is standing and looking at something. That's nice. A menacing looking bird on top. Yeah. Of This was in a in a studio because this this film is about film making actually. This film is about a director played by Guru Dutt. Guru Dutt. This was a young actor, Ashita Rehma, quite by accident. She turns out to be a huge star, and uh, uh, he he is married but estranged from his family. They are in love with each other, but neither of them actually comes forward and say so. So it becomes one of the it became one of those unrequited love kind of right. stories. That's plot in brief, and uh, it in a lot of ways um, mirrors what they went through. That's the sense mm-hmm. that I get. Oh. Yeah. So released on second January nineteen fifty nine. It is widely believed to chronicle the ups and downs in the uh, in their lives. Starting with the filmmaker discovering a protege and making her a star, followed by his own movement parting of ways. It ends with Guru Dutt passing away and Vahida Rehman continuing to pine for him. In the final scene, remembering his glorious past, he lies in the director's chair in an empty film studio, mm. lonely and forgotten man. It had hit but melancholy songs by Kaifi Azmi. Composed by his guitar, <laughs> some amazing compositions. Yeah. Weekend with me from Mysore 
was uh, Gurudan's permanent cameraman. He has done some amazing work here. I'll have a small look at look at in a minute. So uh, the, the way Kagas Kipun has been shot, uh, it reminds one a lot about how this English film called Citizen Kane has been shot. If mm-hmm. some of you have seen it or have seen parts of it, uh, maybe you can sort of correlate. Citizen the, Kane, the, the, isn't the, the, it uh, new or is it old? Old, this, old, very it is old, old, very, very old. Okay. Okay. It's an amazing film. If you get a chance, you should definitely watch it. Okay. Uh, one more tidbit, Kagas Ke Phool, if you are telling me this story, uh, Natta Samrat, I think by Nana Patekar in Marathi, uh, was similar in terms of storyline to a great degree. Mm-hmm. But th- that was more about a neglected uh, actor, great actor. actor. Uh, uh, but similar to the filmmaker. Yeah, yeah, it's similar, related to that build, it's a tragedy story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But this this film obviously didn't run because of how it was and Gurudan yeah. uh, was really shaken by that and uh, as a result of that, after Kargas Kipun, he did not officially direct any film for uh, okay. his uh, production house. They were all officially directed by other people. Mm-hmm. Let's go to a small clip. saying in the movie the heroine is knitting or is it outside yeah. the movie that she is knitting? While she is waiting in between shots. Ah, so in actual life, right? Oh, wow. Outside the movie in the movie. Outside the movie in the movie. Okay. okay. Got it. Ah. <laughs> okay. Hmm. okay. Fatma Begum. Fatma. Born in 1892. It's considered the first woman director. Mm-hmm. She began with Urdu plays and then moved on to films. Her acts in Ardeshi Rirani's Veera okay. uh-huh. Rirani is making another appearance. So he's everywhere, right? Amazing guy. And uh, she set up uh, her own production company called Fatma Films in 1926. And uh, she continued to act in her own productions as well as outside the films as well. Uh, the film that she directed for which she is considered the first woman director, is a film called Bulbule Paristan, mm-hmm. the birds of uh, fairy land, or the land of angels. Mm-hmm. That, that's how Bulbule Paristan can be loosely translated. 
this was Vietnam in India's first talkie alamara obviously no prints exist of this film oh. it is known as a fantasy with some special effects there are not even still images so what you are seeing on the left hand side are all her photographs still images and one of the films that she did duniya kya kare kya hai duniya mm. kya hai is the poster at the bottom bottom left hand corner mm. riya pillai have you guys heard of riya pillai yeah i'm i'm like stunned she right is, she is fatma begum's great granddaughter that's it yeah.